Council, I would like to um, move into a open meeting workshop on governance model review, continuing along the route. Um, Mr. Woodland? Yes. So, uh, just to remind uh, committee that we have severed the discussion on public advisory committees to a separate date and time with a conversation about the city engagement strategy. And I think there's also a motion to just approve around consideration of a advisory body to the corporate services. I will get thrown into that mix as well. Today we're picking up on page six, item eight. Again, we did approve one thing last time, <laughs> so I'm seven. So I'm starting with item eight. It's a very straightforward recommendation simply to give staff the instruction to consider scheduling special public hearings for large development or contentious development applications so you're not left working until midnight. Thank you. On that recommendation, Councillor uh, Isaac? I'd like to move the recommendation. Thank you. Recommendation is moved. Comments, anyone? Seeing none, all in favor? Thank you. Please go ahead. Just, I think it's a great idea, and I'm just wondering how, how would you determine is there a threshold that makes it complex or contentious? Who decides what's contentious? Who decides what's contentious or complex? Is that planning? We do that in conversation with you. I mean, we would anticipate something being large. Um, let's say it's a new phase of Bayview is been negotiated. Dockside is being uh, dealt with with the new app. You know, something major is being renegotiated, renegotiated, or it's a contentious development. So um, when, when and if uh, Northern Junk comes forward, that might be another candidate for a special night anticipating a high level of public interest. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, next is uh, also under item 8, but on the next page is consideration of reducing the amounts of time for people to speak at public hearings uh, to 15 minutes for the applicant and up to 5 minutes for each member of the public. Charlie. that I think even for big ones it's really how you organize your time it's um, if they choose to give their landscape architect 12 minutes well it's going to make it hard for to discuss every other aspect of the project so I think make the standard the default 15 and 5 with some recourse for in special circumstances council could grant more time I understand that we could grant more time, but I think it gives the applicant an opportunity to prepare for what time they may have. So if they're trying to fit it within 15 minutes, 
and then sometimes it's a big application and they're cramming everything in 15 minutes and the public ends up being frustrated because they've left more questions than, than answers. Uh, that would concern me. I, I want the applicant to be able to fully give the public and council a clear understanding of what they're proposing uh, and not suddenly say, we want to give you more time and they may not have all, you know, they haven't put all that together. And, and so it, it is my concern and I, and I just can think of some of the applications we've had in the past, whether it's dockside or rail yards or, you know, Bayview that Hudson, it, it wouldn't have been able to be done in 15 minutes. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Shelby. Well, I concur with um, Councillor I like producing it, but I don't want to, I don't think it's a good idea to wait until the night of and then grab that because people plan their whole presentation based on how much time they have. Would there be a, something in there where it's far more complex that could apply in, in advance for more time to present on the, you know, and that's up to sort of pledge services to weigh what's necessary? I don't want to overcomplicate it. If you think 15 minutes is too short, why do we wait for it? The difficulty in putting life safe services is that Mr. Woodland can be accused of being political. You didn't give me enough time to speak. It might, it might have happened if I had more time. Uh, those are the issues. So. And in the same way, I think you have to be mindful that if you were to grant more time for the applicant, you will get the same demand from the public. So, you know, if, if you think this is too short, then I would, I would suggest going to a <laughs> Marianne, please. Yeah, and somebody, somebody uh, mentioned that, uh, personally, I do think that most public hearing presentations could be done in 15 minutes. They often are. And if we're already going to the trouble of determining what some of our complex prior discussion period, I would like to propose that we keep the regular time limits at 15 to 5, and that for the presentations that require special public Uh, that, that is the recommendation, change it to 30 and 5 for complex, 15 and 5 for regular. All those in favor? All those in favor? Council is held. Okay, so Jeff and Shelly are opposed. Okay, so Jeff and Shelly are opposed. Um, keep in mind that Council will help, will basically make the decision of which ones are complex. And, and it may fall to the public land use committee. Okay. Thank you. Sure. recommendation and just a question to Mr. Woodland um, I wonder if it's worth having a separate standard of minutes for public hearings because one of the things that's useful going back to the OCP is a very detailed account of what each member of the public says now if we're adopting that as a standard we don't want a very detailed account of what each of us say around this table for five hours on a Thursday so I wonder if it needs to be separated out that there's a distinct set of expectations for public hearings that isn't standardized with the rest of what happens yes and that's in fact our intention um, there's actually some positive legal requirements for Council to express its reasons for decisions in certain types of matters. So it is important to capture a 
higher level of detail in the public hearing than it is at the other of So, the answer is yes. Uh, so, we're all happy with the recommendations? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, helps. Help okay. I'm good. I just wanted to put a motion on the table. And uh, I'm sure I'm doing it. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to reflect what Rob actually started about saying, and that was um, lifting the standards that are complementary to standards for reflecting the video of how important. Because I think it's important to have that in there because there are great lifting standards that look really well. of reports that are not decision focused that come here I, I, I think in general they're either 
complex issues or that, re that are likely to elicit questions or they do or they do require a re uh, decision I, I must say I mean I, I think I think the principle is correct I I guess I, I don't think it has been violated all that much so I'm I guess I'm prepared to endorse it Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, I'm prepared to endorse it as well. Um, one thing that I thought it um, might apply to, and I, I don't know if this comes further down or not, but um, it, delegations to GPC, I think, could be done away with. If people want to provide us with information, uh, they can come and speak at a public council meeting so all of the public can hear, for example, about our relationship with the Greater Victoria Development Agency or the Victoria Foundation or any number of people who come and present to us. I think that that's not decision focused and oftentimes the person will start at 10 and it's not till 11 that they leave and I think that that's not a good use of our time. Not saying the information we don't receive is valuable, I think it very much is, but I think that's not a place for those kinds of things at this table. So if that covers that, then I'm extra in support of the motion. So just to reply to that question, you actually have endorsed us developing written guidelines for delegations to both the GPC and standing committees. That was item three of the previous discussion. So we will bring the rules back to you to cover that. Thank you. Did I see any events? Nope. You don't have to. Well, I was just going to concur with that point. I think where the threshold is, is people affiliated with the city. So even if it's the chief of police or even uh, if the union, for example, if they have a relationship with the city and having some exceptional clause where if we wanted someone from a senior level of government or hydro or a government agency that we could invite them, but we get rid of these routine annual reports by these various agencies in town. I think the only because the often council, for example, uh, today, uh, without those routine annual reports, I mean, or a good one, it's like, you know, we had a presentation by the Victoria Economic Development Agency that came out and said, you give us $50,000, here's all the work we did for you, right? Um, and if we don't hear that, then people go, ah, oh, they aren't doing anything for us. You know, and all of a sudden we're starting to, to grind. So we need to, at some point, we need to understand that part of them coming forward is just our way of saying, to a certain extent, we're, we're kind of keeping tabs on how they're spending our money. I mean, one of the big things we're going to have around community centers will be a regular, you know, you know, all this whole grant and we're going to go out repeatedly. And, and I know that the community centers um, do outstanding amount of reporting of numbers and use and all that sort of stuff. It never gets to our table, right? So we never actually know. Uh, so we say, oh, they're not accountable. They're not telling us what they do. They do. They tell our staff that. But it never gets to our table. So at some point, I think there is value in having that information come in, as you say, associated with people that we give money to or some sort of peripheral contextual. I wouldn't dismiss it out of hand. I think that it does have value in keeping it current. I also don't, I also quite well aware of the flip side is everybody wants to get this table, the most information item. They might be asking us for money later or, you know, they can keep in our eye, they curry favor, and then there's those sort of issues as well. So, so yeah, I'm looking forward to Mr. Woodland bringing back item number three. Yeah, and I agree. I, I find there's value when groups like Tourism Victoria or DVBA uh, or the Coalition in Homelessness or the Youth Council come and give us a report. And, and I think in the past we've sort of told them to shorten the time and if we have questions or concerns then we extend it for a little longer. But I think it's a value because it's good to know what's being done and, and when, sometimes by having that presentation uh, triggers questions that we might have and ways that we can improve the relationship or, and I think it's valuable. So that probably relates to the discussion on item number three. And number ten is putting the recommendations on the board. That would be a motion on the record. Bring your hand, all the favor, opposed, carry, thank you. Proclamations. I'd like to speak against this. I think it takes a very small portion of the agenda, but I think it has symbolic value to the groups involved. I got a call from the uh, whatever is rank adjutant of the Canadian Scottish Regiment who was just asking for the procedure. And he says, we want to assert our right to freedom of the city and it's our 100th anniversary and we plan to get a proclamation. And They got all their knickers in a knot and it probably took tons of time at their meetings. And it was about 10 seconds of council proceedings and hopefully no more than five minutes of Rob's staff time. 
but it had an impact. It felt like they got recognition of whatever their important event was. And I think, uh, I think there's value in that. It gives, I think it builds a connection between organizations um, and by extension citizens and their civic government. With, there's, I guess there's value added with very little expenditure of time or resources by council or staff. I love going and giving proclamations and reading them and doing all that sort of stuff, and I'm sure the council is do that. There is an emerging issue that happened in Vancouver, and probably the most emergent, most emergent is one that's happening in Kelowna. So a group came forward and said, please go claim pro-life day. The mayor of Kelowna did it, and now there's a huge backlash for him to do un pro -life. The difficulty is it's fun to uh, do Scottish regiments, walk your dog day, take your kid to work day, all those are fun. Uh, the difficulty is if we do them, we cannot, under the charter, refuse all those other ones. So in the end, you end up endorsing causes that we will probably find difficult collectively endorsing them. And so the recommendation from our staff is you either have to do them all, and whether it's proclaiming the right to, for the right for the National Socialist Party to march uh, is a proclamation. We, you know, there, there, there's things that, so it's easier just to say, you know what, we don't know. We do letters of support, we can show up and do all of those things that, that add the pomp and ceremony without being forced to, um, frankly, uh, basically give the city stamp and endorsement of something that they don't want to stamp, of course. And, and just to clarify your question, this is distinct from passing a resolution of support of something. That's, a, that's an act that we will account for, whereas a proclamation has been determined to be a municipal service, and you can discriminate the capacity of the municipal service. You can, and you have absolutely the same discretion to pass bylaws and resolutions. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. So is the good stuff we remember? Is the bad stuff? Is it better? That's right. Well, could staff tell us, like, if we were to get rid of this, could we set up some user-friendly system of requesting a resolution of support for groups that have relied on proclamations? I'm sure we could And then, and laying out the discretion that council would have. I assume there's some discretion now. Like we couldn't, I don't think we would have to proclaim a day that would violate the criminal code or some other areas of law, like, like hate your neighbor because of their ability day kind of thing. Uh, the only relevant prohibition is in relation to hate speech, so the proclamation that was outright promoting hatred of one to two, and I can't remember what the statute is, but uh, it would be something you can refuse, but you wouldn't be able to necessarily refuse Adolf Hitler or you know, whatever other uh, type of proclamation like the thing that you need to say something to say. And Colonel Roger Strong just said, you know, we bring yeah, I support uh, discontinuing issuing of proclamations, but I think going back to kind of public outcry resource implications, we'd hate this to be the tiny thing of all of these great governance things we're doing that the public picks up and runs with and freaks out about. So I think if there's some way to say, the reason that we're doing this, uh, maybe that's not. Uh, anyways, we need to. I, I agree with Councillor Isaac and you know what what um, Director Woodland kind of nodded quietly about it. That there's some way to seek your council's support of uh, good initiatives that are going on in this community. I don't know what that way is, but I'd like that to be able to continue. And maybe it's just individual councillors bringing things to the table, like like Charlene does with Sharkfin, right? We support this, and on we go. So maybe we don't need anything formal, but I'm prepared to support this um, motion.
Well, if if we want to postpone it, it would be useful to have a reference to all the proclamations we've passed in the past year. So I'm I'm very conscious that some of them I don't agree with all the whereas clauses, and some of them are directly contradictory one with another. And we, I'm sure we've agreed with things that, um, or said we've agree we've agreed with things that we don't necessarily do. I, I. I think a, a resolution of support for some body would require a mover and a seconder. Um, so it would um, uh, be subject to some test, a proclamation where people go in and require the staff to put it forward onto the agenda. Uh, if it hasn't led to trouble already, I think it is it is bound to do so in the future, as the mayor was was referring to. And I, I just don't see the value of us spending half our meeting discussing whether we agree with a proclamation or not, or whether co proclamations are contradicting each other. Charlie, Charlie. Well, well, I'm stuck. <laughs> I agree with Jeff in that it is it's getting more and more difficult uh, with some of the proclamations and either I don't have enough information about the group and, and even though I may Google some and try to find out, it's still on that border and, and I think we're finding there's more and more uh, merging groups that want us to you know, proclaim the day to support their cause. On the other side, uh, for the average citizen, it's just a fun, exciting way, you know. I, I brought one for when Actress Nancy Kwan came to town, and when I went to LA to visit her, it's sitting on our dining room wall that said that was proclaimed Nancy Kwan, and, and it was quite exciting for her. And I think, you know, people see how exciting it is to have a city proclaim a day for them. For even though it's not a, doesn't really do anything. It just is just a piece of paper that says it. It means a lot to them. But I do have concerns, and I, if there's some way that we, it has to be something that has to be brought forward by a councillor and have a seconder, I don't know, whether that is more worth than it's worth or whether it is something that uh, continues to support the practice but ensures that there's at least some support on the table. Shall I marry Andy? Um, I just hate to dumb it down so much that we have to, you know, to just get rid of it rather than actually think about what it is that we're doing, but I do agree with Councillor. You know, I like the idea of a resolution of support for gosh, that in the same paper, it looks official and it takes, it would require someone coming to me or me going to some one of my fellow councillors and going, what do you think? And we can ponder it before we put it forward. I think that would be, so I, I think it has great value in the community. I've got one on our fridge and one on the restaurant. But they are valuable, and they're valuable for the community. Quadra Village Day was a big deal. It's a big deal to get a proclamation, and, and it shows acknowledgement of the event, and it shows, and I think that's what we're here to do, is to support the neighborhood. So, um, and, but I absolutely hear the problems with it, so perhaps if we, if we can look towards what Councilor Young is suggesting, I think that would take some of the fear and guesswork. Yeah, and, and typically it falls on the people who are requesting their support to put something to us. So um, we don't, even with proclamations, we don't solicit the proclamations. But it, it, the issue is um, there's been court rulings on it that says it's a service you can't discriminate against. And that's where it gets problematic. Whereas, you know, uh, although it's a very subtle distinction, actions taken by resolution. And, and quite frankly, now that I've been elected, I'm actually really disappointed at how easy they are to catch. <laughs> 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 so it's it's coming out of the parade. <laughs> 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 so it's, it's, no, it's seriously, no longer it's, special. Like, it's lost its whole side of the first time. Oh, we are Major centers are part of the state of Toronto and for the uh sort of back of the city. Yeah, they don't have to practice up. Yeah, um, I'd be curious to hear legally what council's discretion is with proclamations, but um, 
rather than assign that to our solicitor, I guess, something about to keep some of the special aspects. So I would really strongly favor setting up some process where if your office is approached, whether we have a go-to counselor or whether maybe it's the acting mayor as a p first point of contact, but basically your staff would not necessarily encourage, but would provide a clear process to allow for continuity for groups that have kind of relied on it and not just say, oh, we're done with it, go away, so. I guess I mean, all the reasons why people are explaining why we should keep them, how they're exciting, how they influence, how they do all that, is exactly the danger. The danger is that it's going to go up in somebody's clubhouse like the Hells Angels, and it's like the mayors are right, right? Because we just proclaimed by your Hells Angels motorbike right in the helmet that day, right? It is, that's the difficulty. Um, frankly, if I was uh, still in university, I'd be sitting around on Friday nights with my buddies and coming up with a list of things to make us program and just see how stupid and funny we can get. The problem is, is once we get one, we can't then kill it. You know, we have to, you couldn't, okay, we're not doing proclamations now that we've asked to do this one, right? Because now we're discriminating. So we have to be proactive on this. I'm not sure there's a happy medium. I think we need to just do them and recognize the danger of anybody can ask for one um, or kill them and then we look. We have other ways for, for civic honors, you know, the citizens, or we have people show up and speak and do those sort of things. There's other ways to provide some sort of recognition and sharing special, but I just worry that we're going to get exactly one of those. We're going to get, uh, you know, one of those uh, requests and, and we're doing it. And it's nice to actually get proactive on some of the stuff as opposed to trying to close it around. Uh, but anyways, why don't we, um, I would like to, uh, can we, I don't have any move motion. Jeff, Jeff did. So we have the motion on. Did you want to amend it? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Discontinue proclamations and direct those seeking a proclamation to go to the acting mayor, uh, seeking a resolution by council to support their cause, event, week, whatever. Just so there's some power. I'm not sure that's going to council. Okay, okay, council. Yeah, we just jumped We received this. Through letters to Mayor Council. So you'll see these come up routinely on your on disposition if you want to grab them. Great. Right. But any individual council can grab one and bring it out as a promotion to the show. Okay, so are you withdrawing that? Withdraw, yeah. Uh, okay. On the main motion, then, if I could, uh, all of you in favor. Thank you. Opposed? Uh, Opposed? Care for you. Uh, council policy, external testing in the use. Yeah, these don't require council uh, decisions. These are oh, just things that we'll be working on. Uh, the next section is um, under rule of administration. First one is updating the city manager bylaw. So, it might be time. <laughs> it dates back to 1949, um, and it should be. Dealt with, dealt with in conjunction with an updated employee's bylaws. So it's a two, two barrel thing. <coughs> okay, uh, so you want to move it one, two, and three? Uh, okay. Oh, I see. It is an all okay, let's just do one. Okay, everybody in favor of one. Good. Update the bylaw. Two, the senior manager's responsibilities. Okay, that's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know this is a governance workshop, not a GPC meeting, so I know that we generally are speaking in motions, but I actually could, I go back to F2 to ask a question since we're at this table with this in front. Uh, in internal, implement policy review and planning meetings for senior management to establish a coordinated policy review approach for council. That sounds like a lot and I'm not sure what it's meant to do. I, I like the second, engage council more frequently, but what's the spirit of the first? It sounds like a heck of a lot of work and I don't, just explain. Uh, it, it simply relates to more structure for your uh, annual agenda for doing the things. So whether it gets quarterly report, annual report, we're going to review these particular bylaws now because the dates come due at the end of the year. We're going to review fees. Um, it's a new initiative that has to be brought forward to mesh with the new policy or policy direction council. It, simply, it was simply meant to provide more thoughtful um, timing for what's flowing out of the administration up to the council. Great. Budget. Great. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you, Paul. I'm sorry, I just need to remind you. I thought that the 
sections of white for the ones which were not priorities at this time. They're the no ones we were focusing on. So just following up on this question, that's a great thing to ask. Why would we be here? I think simply because you don't need to tell us to do that, that was something we'll just go to do. So the yellow ones are the ones that we're seeking the formal direction from the council. That's how it was originally formulated. Okay. Item number two, the senior management responsibilities, recommendations to set out duties of senior management positions in the new city employee guideline. And this is as much to do with its outdated nature of the bylaw. Titles have changed, uh, duties have changed, new duties have been imposed in legislation. So it's an update uh, and a spelling out of what the responsibilities are. Thank you. So motion again. Um, who, who, who are senior managers? Does that mean directors or directors and just directors? There are there are some um, there are some legislative ones. So uh, they dip down below the director level. So we have a positive requirement to have a chief administrator officer. That's Gail in our in our world. A corporate officer. That's me and the financial officer, that's Brenda. Uh, both uh, Brenda and I have alternates. Don is the alternate corporate officer. Suzanne Thompson is the alternate financial officer. So those are statutory duties. Whatever else you decide to put into it is optional. So we'll bring back to you with a level of detail we think we need for the organization. So that you have a clear understanding of what these people are, The final one is simply, we believe there's a host of opportunities to delegate uh, to staff uh, responsibilities to do things. Uh, all we're seeking is your permission to bring forward a proposed list of delegated authorities that we can review with you and determine which of those council authorities we wish to delegate to staff. And again, it matches in with the first and second recommendations of the overall structure of the administration and what the council chooses. Some of it is non-discretionary uh, in the sense that the improving officer is a statutory uh, role in uh, the city of Victoria and all other municipalities uh, that we must have and that we don't have discretion. So that's an example of the officer position. Uh, so we're gonna, uh, yeah, we're gonna From my department's point of view, uh, Neil Turner, who you saw this morning at the table, spends a lot of time writing reports on very small things like statutory rights of way, uh, easements and things like that, that uh, require council's approval at this point. But we could delegate authority to, for example, myself to approve statutory rights of way necessary for municipal works. And then we wouldn't have to report to you, write reports, bring those on the table. So that's an example of what we delegate. So essentially, all you're suggesting is that you could provide a guide, and you then separate the models of what's statutory and what's optional. Then the idea is to make your own Right. And what we do is a probably two step process. We bring back a report that has a whole menu of things. Uh, you determine what you're prepared to delegate. That comes back to a second time in the form of a delegation file. Great. Lisa? Um, I remember we had a very long conversation at this table some time ago, and I believe it was spurred by a report brought forward by the planning department. Because is there a similar um, initiative underway to look at delegation of some planning authority? Okay, so that so that that will be done in conjunction with this, yes. and will be that will that planning authority then if if it comes back and we say yeah we like this will that go in the delegation bylaw as well? It could. Okay, yes. great. So put on motion to table. Uh, very helpful comments. All of uh, uh, Eisen. 
I, I think the, I think, um, well, some of this I think could be solved through quicker approval mechanisms. Like, I, I don't know if a written report would be required for a very basic right of way. So maybe just more use of verbal reports from Neil Turner. So he could come to council, give a verbal overview, seek the motion he's looking for, and why is that? The council has expressed in the past uh, and having us with verbal reports. But we get a preponderance of them in camera on very weighty issues that... Yeah, can you express a concern? Wait, those are for major matters. We're talking about extremely minor matters. I, I, in, I in my department, don't want to get into the practice of routinely reporting to you verbally for all those three reasons, including you don't know what I'm going to say when I open my mouth at the meeting. And that can't prolong the decision-making process itself. Well, I'm interested in seeing what, what comes up, but maybe included in this uh, review and proposal, it could include streamlined procedures if possible. That delegation is just one tool to achieve that. Would be something I'd be looking at. I find reviewing the um, remuneration uh, study that uh, they did back in the and one of the things is uh, they recommended that counselors um, work very hard. They recommended increases, but they also recommended that people, uh, that counselors position only three quarters, and that the council could undertake to manage their own meetings better to have shorter meetings and therefore not spend so much. So delegation is also helpful. Right. We're done. We're done for today. We're going to up. We're done. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Question before we adjourn. So, the, originally your report came to the recommendation. So, my question is if you can ask this as well. I'm presuming that we will have an opportunity to see a compilation of all this before you start working on it. Oh, absolutely. Yes, so, I've got two different versions of this, and I would love to be able to see one file. Yeah. Up. So, I've got about a dozen. And uh, you were, you were going to get something that looks a little bit like this as a final version that goes to council that you will vote on. We will try to get it ready for next, well, the 20th at the latest. We'll try to have it ready for next week because I think it is almost ready. And it is your final vote of these things. And most of them are instructions to do things. From that, we will make a huge work plan list and then we'll start chipping them over. That I'd indicate a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Good work, Council.